Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or Eminar Productions and welcome to Ask Eminar episode 175, the series where I answer your questions and more specifically next week, I'm actually gonna have my friend Sean, aka Legos fan here and we are going to answer questions together. If you don't know, he was basically my first ever YouTube friend. So if you have any questions specifically for him or for the both of us or about like 2009 Lego community and what it was like back then, like all that sort of stuff will go really good next week. If you have anything specific that you've maybe been saving, this is gonna be the week to ask it in the comments below. On top of that, don't forget this Saturday, May 22nd is gonna be the first summer Saturday of 2021 and I am so hyped for it. We're building a 2010-ish style clone base so make sure you guys are there for that. Anyway, last week I asked you, do you think LEGO will release more clone troopers in 2022 as prices have hit absurd levels? Jawa says, no, they hate money more than Mr. Beast. That's a pretty high bar. I don't think that's fair to compare them to Mr. Beast like that. Samuel says they'll release a Farm Boy Luke Battle Pack. Yo, low key, any battle pack at this point is something, so I'll take it. And as Bruno says, they don't care unless they get money. We're, we're, we're paying them, to be fair here. They would be getting some money. <laughs> anyway, our first actual question here from Ryan Miller says, did you prefer the way the old sets were structured where you built every minifigure first and then the set, or do you like it the way it is now with the minifigures distributed throughout the bag? So certainly I think each way has its own pros and cons. I think every person may feel differently about this, whether they find it better to have all the minifigs up front or split up throughout the process. I think in general, the better process for a couple of reasons is to have them split up. First reason it's good is that if someone's still steals a Lego set or is trying to steal a Lego set and get all the minifigs out at once, they actually have to do some work to get all of the figures out. It's not just a grab and run type of deal. And while I don't think that that is like the biggest issue, if someone bought a set and was planning on returning it uh, without the figures, they're gonna get all the figures out whichever way it's put in there. But it's still like some barrier to entry, I suppose, which is one way I've heard it put. But the other reason that you would do this is to keep the build more entertaining. Give yourself a reason to keep going. And I think that's especially important uh, for kids, which is what a lot of these Lego sets aim to please at their very core basic level of like the building experience. So that really goes well for someone like that who may not have the attention span. Maybe we don't have the attention span either as older folk. I'm well aware my TikTok habits are not that great. However, I would say I find it generally more entertaining to have them throughout the process. Although if it were the other way around, I wouldn't really care either. Baby Ish says, I love how Lego put the Mando battle pack in bestsellers, but the file first battle pack is nowhere to be found. Baby ish. Shh. The file first battle pack doesn't exist. Manuel says, are we gonna get the crosshair face? Because on all the images LEGO release, crosshair's helmet is always on. So Manuel, because you asked this, I took a closer look at a lot of the imagery they released. And of course, like you said, the helmet is always on. However, if you look really close on some of these product images where you can kind of see a little bit underneath the helmet, a little bit of that neck area, I believe if we weren't getting his face, the head underneath would just be black. That is historically what they have done on faceless characters. However, you can tell quite clearly, and maybe this is different for the final product because sometimes things in product images like this are different, although that is rare and this probably isn't the case. I'm just qualifying this in case I'm wrong so that I don't seem wrong because being wrong is wrong. I'm kidding, if I'm wrong, whatever. But I think his face is there because you can see it's a flesh tone underneath the helmet and that's pretty clear and obvious to me. So that indicates that there will be some sort of face under there. Now, whether or not it'll be accurate to crosshair, that's another discussion. We don't really know that for sure, but I would assume it would be and then it wouldn't just be the generic clone face, but it could just be the generic clone face. Philip says, do you think we'll ever get official Lego Galactic Marines and or Republic Commandos? Bro, these are two of the clone trooper types that I'm so sad we have never ever seen, which basically leaves you with the option of buying like Chinese fakes, which I'm just very against, and buying like Clone Army Customs, which are great, but they're like $30 each, so you can see the problem therein. I think it's unlikely we ever get to either of these things, and there's a pretty basic reason why. I think it's a poor reason to not get these things because clearly there's a massive demand, but I recently saw an AMA on Reddit with the Daily Bulge designer, and he was talking about LEGO superheroes, and we can kind of assume that this sort of thing would transfer over to LEGO Star Wars. And he said something along the lines of, like, when making a set that's not like an adult style set, or UCS set in Star Wars' case, I suppose, although UCS sets tend to kind of stick to this principle anyway, but they're basically like, would an eight-year-old recognize it? And like, I don't know, I don't think that's fair, but that's kind of their mentality in a lot of ways. So if that helps you understand where they're coming from, I suppose, like I said, I disagree with it. I think there's a huge market for it. I think it's obvious there's a huge market for it given 
all of us here literally right now watching this. One of the theories I heard about Bad Batch, and it's just a theory, not even like a leak or a rumor or anything. It's just like that Republic commandos, like they could show up in the Bad Batch in some capacity. Like they could be the, the opposite of the Bad Batch people and like fight them or something. Like, I don't know. I heard some theory like that and I thought it was cool. So I, I like it. Maybe we could see Galactic Marines show up in there too, but I highly doubt that. So yeah, seems unlikely. Very unfortunate. Sucks to suck. Diego says, I'm hoping we get more shore troopers and tan armor, more molded single piece blasters and an empire cargo ship type set. So a lot of stuff there, but I, I really honed in on one thing in your question here, and that is shore troopers with the tan armor or whatever. And essentially I'm, I'm gonna say here now that I think that's gonna happen within the next year or two because I saw some leaked set images from the Cassian Andor show. They were on the Reddit or whatever, and there were shore troopers there on the, on the film set. So like shore troopers are gonna be in the show and Lego's already got the short trooper mold. They've made them before. There's no reason to think they won't make them again. So I, I think your hopes are well placed here. And this means it's probably a good time to uh, move on from my bin of 30 shore troopers that I bought at Brickworld Chicago in like 2018 for $2.50 each. I literally bought a sealed case. I should have bought more. They had more, but it was like the end and I, I wanted to let other people get a box too, so I didn't buy more than one box. All right, so they're selling boxes of the Scarif Stormtroopers. I think I might buy two boxes. Yep, there you go. Well, oh, you better hurry up, there's only one left and open. Everyone's what about got those like other tons two? of them. Two I, I don't know. I, yeah, there, yeah, there are two there. Right. Scarif? I think so. Is there another Star Wars poly bag? No. It says so Star that's, Wars. That's it. Yeah, you're buying the boxes. Yeah. Just go ahead and get all the boxes. Uh, just for he wants to anyway. I'm buying two boxes. <laughs> I'm gonna do a parts draft. It's scare troopers. They're gonna build a scare farm. This is 60 scare troopers. You know how much you're going, Booker? Then it's 30 minutes. So, so I didn't know this was supposed to be early this year. Yeah. Last year, when it's 5 p.m. 5 p.m. I don't know. I think four. It's gonna set this down. Last, last year might have been the 3:30 or something, but yeah. What? There's none left. I got like the last. Get out of here, Elijah. Dude, I whatever. I've been buying them all. Is, that's why. Is, that's why me and Matt have been going to the Discovery okay. sale. One fifty. Black and check. One sixty-five. Thank you so much. Damn, Danny. <laughs> Why? You don't know who I hate it. You don't know who I he is. I haven't posted in a long time. Okay. I'm leg like above production. So okay. The ambassador of Rebel Lug. Yeah, that's cool. Honestly, I might not sell it because it's a really cool thing to just have to me. Maybe we'll also finally get the shuttle that they were going to make in place of Krennic's shuttle as well, like the Zeta class. I think it was Zeta class. Back in 2016 or whatever, when they were, were designing the Rogue One sets, they said Disney wanted them to make the Zeta class, but they ended up convincing Disney that they should do Krennic's shuttle instead, and they didn't. I think that was the right decision, but that doesn't mean they can't do this other stuff now, and maybe uh, that will fit in with the Cassian Andor show if it shows up in there. Hazap says, when do you expect a play scale gunship since Lego said they didn't have any plans for it and the second part of this question is pretty good also three years ago i spammed in your live chat so i want to say i'm sorry for that hey you're, you are forgiven and exonerated of your crimes anyway place kill gunship i would guess 2023 maybe at the earliest like they say they have no plans for it which doesn't really mean much to me because even if they did they wouldn't tell you now i will say when they said that they had already probably decided and were working on and maybe even almost finished with uh summer 2022's lineup so i would and the gunship would definitely fit in the summer lineup it would not fit in the january lineup so i would have to say summer 2023 at the very earliest and i'm shocked they aren't doing it now and i know they're doing the ucs one so fair enough but i I'm shocked it's not gonna happen sooner because if you go on and you look, and I think these are two different markets with the UCS one and the Playscale one, they're two completely different things. And just because the UCS thing of something exists doesn't mean a playset version of something can't exist. But again, this would be uh, farther down the line after the UCS one retires or is near the back end of its lifespan anyway. The set on eBay, all the Playscale gunships, all three of them are, are worth more than the 2013 one even, I would say. Sealed in box are like $600. Like a lot, like if you go on eBay right now and look at a lot of Lego Star Wars sets, it's absolutely mind-bogglingly insane. Every day I see something new, I'm like, oh, that's worth that much now? What happened? Because <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't look at everything every day. It's impossible. So, so that was one of those where, you know, I feel like six months ago it was worth 400 and now it's worth like 600 and I'm just like mind blown over here. But yeah, the uh, gunship play scale, probably not anytime soon, two years at the very least. Brothers Build Studio says, how did you get your YouTube channel to grow in your first couple years after starting it? So 
If you don't know, I've been doing YouTube for like 11 years now, which is actually 12 years now, which is actually insane. And like my channel, like your first couple years, especially if you're trying to like do this long term and make it like your job or whatever your end goal is, um, you, you just spend on growing like personally, like growing your skill set, not your channel. Like you, you shouldn't be expecting some crazy results, especially if you're just brand new and you don't know what you're doing. You're not making good videos. But I picked this question because I've kind of really honed in on a mindset as far as like making YouTube content goes that I think will help you hear Mr. Brothers Build Studios. And it's from like watching a lot of videos of Mr. Beast talking about this sort of stuff and reading stuff online and just like generally from my experience making content on the internet, my videos when I first started were absolutely garbage. Even for the time they were garbage. And that's just like something you gotta deal with. You might be making bad videos and that is just the truth of it. Facts don't care about your feelings. And I really like that. I think that's really important. It's very important to be realistic with yourself. I think the most important thing to get in your head and keep in your head, especially as you, I would uh, infer from reading your comment, a, a small YouTuber just starting out, the two most simple, basic, important things when creating YouTube content is to make a video that people want to watch and is entertaining for them to watch, hence they watch it. So you want them to watch your video all the way through or for as long as possible within your allotted time slot of what whatever 12 minutes or however long your video is. And you want them to click on your video. So you want your video title and thumbnail to be clickable. You know, there's always the people on in the comments that are like, this is clickbait, this click. A lot of the times it's not clickbait. Uh, the, the term clickbait, much like the term scam, and there's a lot of other terms that have that have become grossly overused and have lost their base meaning. But if you look at these terms and their base meaning, it's pretty simple that a lot of things that a lot of people are saying are clickbait are not. They're just very clickable because if it's not clickable, no one's gonna click on it. What a concept. So on a really basic level, I don't compare yourself to other people and how much they've grown because it's gonna be different for everyone else throughout every period of time in their channel's life. But seriously, very simply make videos as good as you can so that people will watch them for as long as you can possibly get them to watch them for and be entertained. And you need good click-through rate. You gotta make them clickable, but not clickbait because if it's clickbait, people won't watch it. That's the truth behind it. Jonah says, will the price of the Bad Batch show go up when it releases? So is it smart to pre-order it? I mean, it's definitely not gonna go shoot right down to the to the floor when it first releases. I mean, no matter what, when it first releases, it'll be full price everywhere. So you're not gonna be finding any like deals on it, so to speak. But if you're willing and able to pay full price and you plan to pay full price come release day August 1st, there's absolutely no reason not to pre-order it right now. And I, I think with Lego sets, pre-ordering something is a little bit more sensible than like pre-ordering a video game because when you pre-order a video game, you really don't know what you're getting. The price of it is is irrelevant in my opinion here, Jonah. Like the price of it's gonna be $100 from the retailers when it releases. If it sells out, resellers are gonna be selling it for more. But if you're smart and you just wait for a restock, you'll get it for the $100 or maybe even less if you wait like six to 12 months, you can find it for 10 or $20 off maybe even. But that's kind of besides the, the point here. I think I think it is very smart to, to pre-order it. One, because you can always cancel it. I mean, it doesn't release until August 1st. Right now it's May 18th as we're sitting here talking. So you have two and a half months to maybe change your mind and just cancel your pre-order. You, you don't lose any money. You don't have like a non-refundable deposit or anything. There's there's no loss to pre-ordering. The other thing with that is I see a lot of people in, in the, the realm of video games saying, you know, stop pre-ordering video games. It's, it's bad. It lets the developers do bad things and they can like just take your money and then they can give you crap. I think with Lego, it's, it's fundamentally different because you know the final product you're getting. You're looking at the final product. With a video game, like I pre-order Call of Duty every year because I love Call of Duty and I'm just gonna buy it anyway and it doesn't matter. But if you're like pre-ordering single player games or games that just kind of you don't buy every year like COD or whatever the case is, like a lot of people will pre-order a game and the game when you pre-order it isn't finished you you look you see this two minute trailer and then you pre-order it based off that and then you get it and it turns out to be crap with a lego set you're pre-ordering a set and like you, you've seen the pictures you know what it looks like and you should be able to make a pretty good guess as to whether or not you think you'll end up liking the set based off those pictures because that's otherwise what you'd be making that decision on anyway almost 100 percent of the time so i think it's incredibly smart to pre-order it because you already know what you're getting you're not losing any money if you decide to cancel it and on the flip side of that you're guaranteeing yourself your copy i mean it's not that you wouldn't eventually get a copy otherwise or that you might not even be able to order it on day one otherwise like there's no guarantee it'll even sell out day one but this is just protecting yourself against that i really cannot think of a legitimate downside if you plan on buying it anyway to not pre-order 
a Lego set. Speaking of pre-ordering, if you do decide to go through and pre-order the Bad Bad Shuttle, make sure you use one of the conveniently placed affiliate links in the description below. J Stud says, when you were younger, did you like to trade minifigs with your friends? That's how I got most of my clones. So I, did, I guess I didn't really trade with my friends. I traded with my brother and my cousin, Josh. Uh, we'd do a lot in my grandma's garage, out in the garage, open garage. I'm like, oh man, good memories, great memories. But my story to go with this is that my cousin, Josh, what's up, Josh, if you're watching, uh, had a friend, I think his friend's name was Riley. And this was certainly before I had every Lego set and could buy every Lego set I wanted. His friend Riley just happened to have like a bunch of episode two stuff from 2002. And when all this is happening, it's probably like 2006, seven, eight, maybe into 2009-ish era of, uh, of my life. And so we're making these trades. And to me, like his friend Riley was like a god. It was like, this guy has all the 2002 figures. Josh, I need more of these. Trade him more and then trade me. And so there were a few crazy trades that I got uh, to get some old 2002 figures. I don't remember exactly which ones I got otherwise, but I definitely remember getting a blue super battle droid and being really hyped about that. I mean, I couldn't afford to buy it on eBay back then and they certainly weren't available in stores and everything so like it was trade or don't have I look back very fondly on that but nowadays I don't I don't trade at all because let's it's just not worth my time and I, yeah, I just don't need to trade. <laughs> MNR doesn't want to spend $50 on one shot clone trooper. Also MNR buys a hundred Admiral Thrones. Well, for your information, I only bought like 24 of them. Also, they literally cost less than the shock trooper. So there's that too. At some point I'm gonna have to sell those though. Cause it's literally what I bought them for like five months ago. And I'll probably double my money at least, which is exciting. Lego investing is actually pretty good if you do it right, I suppose. For me though, I usually don't find it worth the time. I only did Admiral Thrawn cause he's like, my favorite guy ever and I was just like I know this guy is gonna go up I may as well it seems fun and I thought I could eventually make a good video out of it so I YOLO'd it I mean if you want to make some money to buy more Lego sets investing in figures is is a pretty decent way to do it although nothing's guaranteed I suppose NOP says thoughts on the daily bulge will you get it one day so I, I I saw the set revealed it looks great it's 300 bucks so it's right in that wheelhouse of like expensive but not like $800 expensive I guess but I think it looks amazing I mean I don't my, my problem with it is I asked a, a buddy of mine like what movie is this from because I wanted to watch a movie and be able to be like, oh, there it is. I like that. Let me go get that. Because that's like, kind of like what I did with Stranger Things. When the Stranger Things set got released, I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't care about this. And then I went and watched Stranger Things. I was like, okay, I'll be there day one. And that's kind of what I was hoping to do with this. But like, he said it was based off the comics. And I'm like, oh, well... I can't read, so that doesn't help me. So while I think the set looks great and I'm, I'm really excited for people that are excited for it, I just, I don't have a way to get that connection that I wanna have with it, so I don't know if I'm gonna buy it or not. And even if I do buy it, like, I'm gonna review it and not know what I'm talking about. Ultimately, I think it's gonna be like a game day decision. I think it comes out like May 26, so I've got like a week to decide whether or not I wanna buy it and decide whether or not I'm gonna go to the Lego store that morning. So if I get it, I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna come back and like live stream building it all day or something if I do end up doing that. But at this point, it's kind of 50-50. And like I said, game day decision. Let me know in the comments if I should get it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Ask Our Productions. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future episodes and other videos on the channel. Got a uh, Lego Bonsai Tree review coming soon. You might like that. Also, don't forget, my friend Sean's gonna be on next week's episode. Get your questions in like within the first day or two because he's not gonna be here like the whole week. So you gotta have them in early. Otherwise, they won't make the video unfortunately, because we just have to film it before I normally would. P.S. I'm feeling really good lately. I think I'm gonna have a great summer of making videos. I also say this with a caveat of if the Bruins and Celtics just absolutely stink it up in the playoffs, I'm not gonna have a great summer of making videos, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you for watching. Deuces. Oh, no, not... Why did I... That's stupid.